My favorite mango yogurt got discontinued. SpaghettiOs aren't going anywhere, but not everything found in a tin can can say the same. Here are 10 discontinued canned foods you'll never see again. Pumpkin Spice Spam. You know what's crazy about this time of year? Everything is pumpkin spice. When the seasons change from summer to fall, the air cools to a gentle crisp, the leaves change from green to vibrant colors of red and orange, and seemingly every snack and warm beverage becomes pumpkin flavored. It's the season of warm sweaters, short days, and pumpkin everything. While pumpkin pie, pumpkin lattes, pumpkin baked goods, and pumpkin scented candles are quintessential autumn must haves, pumpkin flavored flavored spam is an autumn must not. This limited time version of Hormel Foods cooked canned pork tastes as wrong as it sounds. Spam can be a questionable choice of canned food on a good day, but this particular product is evidence that adding some pumpkin spice to something does not automatically make it nice. Mm, mm, mm. Good soup! I love the combination! The thought of cracking open a can of pumpkin-flavored Spam is as scary as Halloween itself. Even Freddy Krueger wouldn't go near this creepy concoction. Thankfully, pumpkin-flavored Spam has not reappeared on shelves. And unlike Charlie Brown's Great Pumpkin, it's likely nobody is ever going to sit around and wait for it to come back. Philly-style cheesesteak soup. Cheeseburger cracker flavor combos, Philly cheesesteaks from Pat's, Philadelphia is home to so many iconic things. The Rocky movies, the Liberty Bell, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's origin story, America's origin story, and ooey gooey delicious Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. A mouth-watering handheld favorite beloved by many, Philly cheesesteaks are made with thin-sliced ribeye steak, melted provolone cheese, and caramelized onions, all nested between a soft sub bun. In an effort to profit from the Philly cheesesteak's well-earned popularity, the Campbell's Soup Company decided it would make a version of their hearty, chunky soup line called the Philly Style Cheesesteak Soup. The chunky soup line was originally created and marketed specifically for those whose big appetites didn't normally gravitate towards soup as a meal selection. I know, it's great, right? Another! <laughs> In theory, it made sense, and many of the Campbell's Chunky Soup selections became popular and are still available today. The Philly-style cheesesteak soup, however, is no longer available for purchase. For some reason, this sandwich soup hybrid was not a crowd-pleaser, and it has since been canceled. Our assumption? Anyone who finds themselves craving an original Philly cheesesteak sandwich will want to partake in an actual Philly cheesesteak sandwich, because, well, soup just won't cut it. Pudding in a can. Mike! I found a chocolate pudding! Pre-packaged, individualized snacks have long been a childhood lunchbox staple. Easy for kids to pack themselves, solo snacks are a favorite of parents and kids all across America and beyond. Long before there were bento boxes, bear paws, and snack packs, kitty snacks came in a questionable variety of packaging. What we know today as pudding cups originally came in snack-sized tin cans. In the 1970s, tiny tin cans with poppable tops housed a few delicious dollops of chocolate pudding, perfectly portioned and canned for an after-lunch sweet treat. These metallic tin cans had an opening just big enough to allow for the top of a teaspoon. Eventually, pudding stopped being canned and started being packaged in the plastic single-serving pudding cups we know and love today. Perhaps arming small school children with sharp metal edges from pop-top cans turned out to be a bad idea. Perhaps the moisture-rich chocolatey pudding absorbed some of the can's tinny flavor, causing it to taste more like metal than pudding. Ew! 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 All we know is that today's snack packs are pudding perfect, just the way they are, and pudding in a can is no longer an option for creamy connoisseurs. If you're not already a Babbletop subscriber, take a second and hit that subscribe button. Thanks! Full Throttle Coffee Energy Drink It's four shots of espresso. Yeah, I, I know what a quad is. 
Sometimes everyone just needs a pick-me-up. First thing in the morning, or during that afternoon slump at the office, or just before heading out on the town for a night of dancing. Caffeine is what many people turn to in order to get that extra pep in their step. A regular cup of coffee contains about 40 milligrams of caffeine, while a can of Red Bull contains about 30 milligrams of caffeine. Either of these beverages are a solid choice when the eyes are feeling droopy and the brain fog has descended. At some point, somebody, somewhere, perhaps a very sleepy someone, imagined a world in which energy drinks and coffee could intermingle, creating the ultimate wake-up call. Unfortunately, the combo was less than magical. Put them together and what have you got? Tight, 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 yeah! Well, back in the day, there was a line of energy drinks that contained coffee called Full Throttle Coffee Energy Drinks. It came in vanilla, mocha, and caramel flavors, and its parent company, Coca-Cola, claimed that each flavor was made with 100% pure Arabica coffee beans. Its slogan read, Coffee Fully Charged. Unfortunately, the Full Throttle Coffee Energy Drink batteries were not quite fully charged, and their momentum soon ran out. Unable to compete with Monsters, Java Drinks, and Rockstar's roasted selections, Full Throttle Coffee Energy Drinks eventually eased off the throttle and came to a permanent halt. Franco-American Macaroni and Cheese The Mac calls it Mac's Famous Mac and Cheese. The Franco-American Food Company originated in Jersey City, New Jersey in 1886. Franco-American was soon acquired by the Campbell's Soup Company in 1915, but the Franco-American brand can still be found on some of their products to this day. In 2004, the Campbell's Soup Company rebranded its canned pasta products and some popular Franco-American products like Franco-American macaroni and cheese were discontinued. However, it turns out this canned cheesy pasta did not go quietly into the night. Many of its fans have taken to the internet to protest its removal and advocate for its return. There's a petition on change.org begging Campbell's to bring back America's preferred canned pasta. There's a Facebook group called Lovers of Franco-American Canned Macaroni and Cheese. It's official. America has spoken, and it loves the taste and convenience of a can of Franco-American Macaroni and Cheese. We love it. Hopefully, the fine folks at Campbell's Soup will hear the cries of the broken-hearted mac and cheeseless people and bring back Franco-American macaroni and cheese. Unfortunately, as of right now, Franco-American macaroni and cheese is still nowhere to be found. Trader Joe's Pet Food Regular customer doing some regular pet food shopping. Canned food is not just for people. Our furry friends benefit from the miracle of canning, too. No longer are animals expected to venture outdoors and hunt for their dinner like their animal forefathers. Instead, today's house pet just has to laze around, wearing the occasional costume for their owner's enjoyment. Canned cat and dog food is convenient for both fur babies and their owners, and lovers of Trader Joe's have long enjoyed the added convenience of finding an affordable canned pet food option that that bears their most trusted grocery store brand. Unfortunately for TJ loyalists, Trader Joe's grain-free line of cat and dog food has recently become extinct. Issues with recent supply and production have caused the pet food line to cease to exist. Trader Joe's released a statement in April 2022 apologizing for the inconvenience of the pet food's disappearance and explaining the reason for their cat and dog food demise. They also provided a list of trusted alternatives for customers to feed their pets instead. Although their canned cat and dog food line is no longer available, loyal Trader Joe's shoppers will most likely continue to shop there for human food. Campbell's Pepper Pot Soup Ah, my favorite, hot soup. Pepper pot soup is a traditional Caribbean dish which eventually became a staple in the state of Philadelphia, starting around the end of the 19th century. Pepper pot soup is made with root vegetables, salt, pepper, and an array of seasonings, as well as beef stomach, more appetizingly referred to as tripe. The Campbell's Soup Company came out with their own canned version of pepper pot soup in 1899, and it lasted for more than 100 years, until they eventually ceased producing it in 2010. Campbell's cited changing consumer tastes as its main reason for discontinuing the long-standing soup staple, but it appears they may have jumped the gun. Try something new, huh? 
It appears many consumers' tastes haven't changed all that much after all. If you look online, you can find a vast array of recipes for Campbell's Pepper Pot Soup wannabes. In February 2020, the Philadelphia Inquirer ran a story for Black History Month about the resurgence of Pepper Pot Soup and the importance of reclaiming it as an integral piece of Black history and heritage. Campbell's provides no shortage of soup options for their soup-loving patrons, and their brand will no doubt survive long into the future even if they don't bring back pepper pot soup to their long list of belly warming offerings but it seems like many people wish this canned soup favorite hadn't been taken off the shelves snow crop juices no charlie it's just orange juice most Americans have distinct memories of a plastic jug sitting in their fridge filled with watered-down juice made from frozen concentrate. Have you ever wondered where that frozen juice from concentrate originated from? <laughs> In 1917, some Floridians began producing orange juice. They were making so much orange juice, they needed to figure out how to market it across the country. They searched high and low for a way to preserve the citrus liquid so it could be packaged, shipped, and sold around the USA without going bad. Over the next several decades, they turned to dehydrating, canning, and freezing to continually improve their packaged orange juice product. And from there, frozen juice from concentrate was born. In the beginning, canned juice from concentrate was marketed and sold under the name Snow Crop Juices. After earning monumental success in the 1940s juice game, Snow Crop began canning and marketing other canned products like veggies, spinach, and strawberries, before eventually being taken over by well-known canned juice brand Minute Maid in 1954. Black Cherry Fanta Wanna Fanta? Don't you wanna? Of course you do, because it's so refreshing it's impossible to resist. You can get Fanta in multiple ways. In a plastic bottle, in a fountain drink cup at the movies, and in a shiny, cool can. Fanta has created a lot of incredible flavors for Fanta lovers to choose from over the years, but once upon a time, they canned a particularly bad flavor that didn't quite catch on, Black Cherry Fanta. It was originally released back in 1962, and it lasted less than 12 months due to its unpopularity. For some reason, perhaps poor or blocked out memory, it was released again in the early 2000s. Why? Though it lasted a wee bit longer than it did in the 60s, it failed to gain momentum and it no longer exists. Canned Bugles Pass the bugles. There's no more bugles! Some things really belong in a can. A can helps keep fruits and veggies fresh. Cans make easy to make pasta accessible to those who don't excel in the culinary arts. Cans are ultra convenient, and the process of canning changed the food game forever. That being said, some things should not be canned, and bugles are one of those things. In the 1960s, a company came out with a line of canned bugles identical to the bagged bugles we all know and love. In fact, both versions were released around the same time. Shockingly, bagged bugles won out in the end because they were far more convenient and made far more sense. It's very simple, straightforward. People quickly learned that bugles don't need to come in a hard-to-open can. Who wants to bring a can opener to a party so they can open their dried, salty snacks? The answer is nobody. Canned bugles did not last very long, and eventually the needlessness of bugles in a can died out. Why someone decided to can a crunchy snack like bugles, we may never know. The moral of the story is, just because you can can doesn't mean you should can. Open up more great videos. Just tap or click. Oh, and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.